George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're here at Dell Storage Forum 2012 in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, continuing our interviews at the show with uh, various Dell executives. Joining me right now is Bob Fine, uh, Director of Product Marketing at Dell. How are you doing, Bob? Doing very well, George. Nice to be here. Nice, Good to, see you. Uh, nice to see you again. Uh, so this uh, fluid file system thing kind of came up. Um, I know that it was working its way through the product line and there was hints it was going to make it into the compellent offering. I think we're here now, right? We are. Uh, Dell's had the technology for a little while since we acquired Exanet. First, we rolled out the technology on PowerVault. About a year ago, we brought it out on Equalogic. Mm -hmm. And now for the first time, we have it on Compellent as well. Okay. So what does that mean? I guess there's two types of people who are going to be uh, interested in this. The current Compellent customers, I would think, would have a lot sure. of interest in it. And then uh, potentially new guys that are thinking about a, a sort of a NAS or maybe unified strategy. So let's, let's talk about the, the Dell Com Compellent customer right now. What, what can they do with this? So any of the existing customers, really on any of the recent controllers that we have, they can add this to their existing technology. So um, really almost any type of configuration they have, they can bring this in. The way they would do that is through our uh, hardware device that provides the hardware platform. It's a highly available, purpose-built to you device, and that can be scaled. And then customers can add that into their existing compellent uh, there's no additional software licensing. That's all part of the hardware. And like I said, they can add it, and away they go. And now they've got a, a great block system, and they can add in a file system right on top of it. Okay. Well, and, and what I saw was that the, and you talked about the purpose-built nature of it. Yes. But what I saw was that uh, this wasn't just sort of some Dell server that we had laying around that we loaded this stuff on. It looked like it was custom designed for this specific task, right? We, we took a relatively standard Dell hardware design added some specific enhancements to it. One of the things we needed to do was make it uh, more available. Okay. So we tweaked the code a little bit because inside each device there's two controllers and we needed to optimize the cache mirroring between the two. Okay. Uh, the device already had some great uh, data protection as far as battery backup. Uh, we also added some capabilities for the uh, uh, tools to manage the hardware, the uh, baseboard uh, monitoring control mm -hmm. in the controller. We added that as well. It, truly a very robust, highly available system. And again, uh, each device uh, can be scaled. So in a compellent world, a customer can have uh, from one to four of these appliances. Each appliance has two controllers. Okay. A little bit different on the Equalogic side uh, because that portfolio is a little bit smaller. On Equalogic, a customer can have one or two of these appliances. Okay, so for the real big NAS mm -hmm. environments, this, this merge between Compellent and the fluid file system, is that's really the way to go then? It really is, and it's a, uh, it's a very scalable design as well, not just hardware, but the file system as well. The way it's designed, based on the core technology, is that our customers can scale up to one petabyte of a common namespace. Uh, a real great feature of this design is they can do that scaling non-disruptively. So a customer might start out with one of the appliances and, like I said, over time, add up to four, scaling that without interruption, keeping their entire system operational the full time. Plus, we do auto load balancing. So as performance changes, the number of nodes change, etc., we'll balance performance, we'll scale performance, Plus, they get all the benefits of the back-end compelling storage, too. So, so features uh, like the automated tiering and things like that still apply in this world as well? It works really, really well. The back-end storage, the compelling storage, gets to do all its great magic, whether the data stored on it is block mm -hmm. or file. And compelling's always been very granular in how we do that automatic tiering. But it's really ideal in a file type of environment where some of those files might be idle for a long time. Right. Uh, we've got a lot of intelligence. We know which, which data is inactive. And we'll automatically move those down. So for a customer, what they get is they'll maintain performance, but we're reducing the cost. Because that inactive data, file, or block that they don't need, we automatically move it down to much cheaper tier of storage. So the... 
what's interesting if you kind of look at the unified market, uh, you know, a lot of the unified offerings sort of started as NAS and they kind of figured out a way to shove block in it. Sure. And, and you know, there's there's some concern about what that block performance might look like. Sure. And so it sounds like for, for applications that I still want to do block, I get my native block performance that I'm used to. You really do. And that's uh, why we took the approach we did. Uh, we wanted to first have an optimized block system. Mm -hmm. And now we've added in a optimized file system. Uh, over time, those may come together, they may not, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But right now we've got a best of breed block and a best of breed file, and customers can pick and choose how they want those to work together. It's their choice. Okay. What are you seeing uh, some of the use cases for this type of a system? Uh, there's a variety of use cases. Maybe it's a deep uh, file archive. Um, something really above and beyond the traditional database. Um, a file share is a pretty typical example as well. Um, a variety of different uses. Okay, great. The, um, from a total scalability standpoint, you, you said we could go out to uh, four um, appliances. Four nodes. And four nodes, and then right. uh, that would be a total of eight controllers. Correct. Now, are all the controllers active? They're all active. Okay. Um, and uh, as I mentioned briefly, it's uh, uh, automatic load balancing between the two. Okay. So it's all active with the load balancing so that load is shared and we can optimize performance as we go. So in this environment then, um, how, how does support work? One of the things that uh, we've heard from our customers ever since the beginning with Compellent is how great Copilot is. And now that we've been part of Dell, Copilot is uh, probably even more important because we're in a, a bigger scale now. We're able to reach more customers of different sizes and around the world. Uh, what we've heard here at DSF a year ago, we've heard it again literally today and yesterday, was how important Copilot is. And customers have said, Dell, don't mess around with Copilot. In fact, they want it to be extended. They want Copilot to be part of Compellent and Equalogic and PowerVault and across the portfolio. With the new products, the uh, Fluid File System and the new device, the FS8600, mm -hmm. fully supported by Copilot. It's part of what we do. And one of the key enablers for this is our phone home capability. Since day one, all Compellent systems phone home on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we keep a, a database internally of system status, uh, information about the system. We, we have no idea what data is stored. We know a variety of system parameters. Okay. So the new NAS device does a phone home as well. We do this typically on a weekly basis, unless there's a problem. And uh, once we get that phone home, we can do proactive monitoring, all covered by the uh, very comprehensive Copilot support. Okay. So it, does management get more complex now? Because like, it sounds like I've got this uh, different node to do files, and, a different, and of course I'm still doing my normal block. How does management work in this uh, structure? Um, it's really not. Um, one of the things that we've done is the management of compelling systems is managed by a tool that we call Enterprise Manager. And it's a multi-system view into the architecture, and customers can essentially do anything through the GUI that they want through Enterprise Manager. Okay. So as part of this release, we added Enterprise Manager capability as well. So customers, existing customers, know this tool already. So it's a very small training, a very small upgrade path from that sense, if you will, a management path mm -hmm. to add in this layer as well. So NAS, Block, they still use Enterprise Manager, easy to configure and easier to set up. Okay, great. Well, let's let's kind of uh, wrap up with the, uh, the the guys that aren't necessarily uh, compellent yet, uh, sure. that are they're out there, they're looking for a uh, a universal type uh, type of uh, or a unified uh, type of system. Sure. What do you think is going to be the the key things that are going to differentiate what you guys are doing with Fluid File System versus you know your four or five other major competitors? Um, yeah, good question. There's a lot of um a lot of products in the market were by far not the first and were absolutely not the last. Mm -hmm. um, and some customers, really all they want to talk about is the technology and tell me about the journal file system or active active controllers or the load balancing. But I think once the uh, technical guys get past that, other people get involved in the executives and the um, uh, maybe the CFO, and they want to start talking about, well, okay, the technology is good, but how does it impact my business and what are the other costs associated with it? They recognize that it's not just about speeds, feeds, and feature XYZ, but what is it going to cost me and how, 
how easy is it to manage and what about when I want to upgrade over time or if there's a change to the an interface or a new type of disk drive mm. am I going to have to rip and replace that system so I think where Dell Compellent can stand out is we have all the great technical features mm. but when customers start looking at the real TCO how much effective storage can I really use that's where we shine and this solution provides that capability as well so it's Great technology, easy to manage, great support, and if technology does change, we can support that without a forklift upgrade. Great. Well, hey, Bob, thanks for joining us today. Really good, George. Uh, George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.